Yeah, I'm up on the cloud, ain't coming back down. Try crunchy, melty, rich toasted chips. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the VESL Esports League. My name is Jackson, joined alongside Josh for this banger of a matchup coming our way. I could not be more excited to get back into the action of high school esports. We had Valorant just the other day, and now we're transitioning into Rocket League, and I could not be more excited. Yeah, starting tonight with E.E. E. Smith versus Pine Forest, and this is only week one of our $25,000 qualifiers here for VESL, so all these teams, they're pretty fresh faces to all of the production talent here. We're excited to get into this one, excited to see what these teams have to bring to the table. From what I understand, in just this spring season alone, there's over $195,000 in prizing throughout all these different games. This is huge for some of these teams right here. So we're going to see who has what it takes to really take it through to these later weeks in the series, try to, or in the season, try to move closer and closer to that $25,000 prize. Exactly. This is cool for some of these teams, but it is also cool for high school esports as a whole coming in, mm. being able to prov provide something for students to play in with such significance with nearly 100,000 in prize pools, like you mentioned, across all the games, which are Valorant, Super Smash Bros. and Rocket League. But without further ado, let's get into the action. Let's get into some of the gameplay here now and start to check out how these two schools can compete. Here we go, Josh. We got an action on the way. E.E. E. Smith and Pine Forest. How you feel about this one? Popping right into this. It's a quick grab there from E.E. E. Smith. Looks like Divian, Carlos, and Z. That's going to be the roster coming in from E.E. E. Smith. Fairy, Fent, and Legs coming in from the side of Pine Forest. Yeah, I'm excited to see how these two teams can match up here right now. E.E. E. Smith is going to be trying to lock this one in, try to maybe find an early start here right now. But it is actually going to be Pine Forest on the hunt, finding the offensive zone here now and looking to work over toward goal. Big passing play, but it's actually not going to work out in their favor. And it is going to be blocked away. Now we got E.E. E. Smith playing goal right now, trying to block this one away, trying to play this defense as it's sent over towards the side of Pine Forest. But Pine Forest, they're keeping this ball in play and they're getting some shots on target. And there's the first goal off the own player from E.E. E. Smith. And that is gonna be Pine Forest taking the one nothing lead. Yeah, look at this setup from the side. Legs just sends it to the center. And that's what happens when you're, you're trying to make those goal line plays, but you gotta be really, really aware of the angle of your own car right there. I mean, it can happen there in Rocket League. You see it come through legs ends up grabbing the first goal in the game a little bit cheeky there from them but pie forest up one oh already setting it up to the middle legs with a second one off the off the boards pass to himself Josh, I'm starting to think I might have to throw my hat here for legs in a, in a few minutes if he continues up on this pace. Two goals already to his name and hunting for more. We're a minute down in this game number one of a long best of five. So we'll see who does actually end up taking this one. It's going to be a shot on target now, dropping it down and a no shot way. in. It's going in. Legs will find it. And there's the hat trick of just a minute and eight seconds. He has found three on the board. I think we might have found Pine Forest standout player here. Legs right off the bat. Just absolutely giving it to him. Off the kickoff every single time. We're just over a minute into this game. And Legs has picked up a hat trick. And there's no sign of stopping. He's aggressively using this boost to get across the field. He's always trying to be the player touching that ball. And his teammates as well. They're right there to support him. They're kind of here. They've been here to set up these shots from Legs. Legs tries to be the setup man this time. Pass it over to Fairy. Fairy taps it in. 4-0 domination from Pine Forest in game one. Pine Forest running up the scoreboards here right now. Four on the board already. Minute 30 in play. E.E. E. Smith, I'm really wondering if they got it in them to bounce back, right? You got to take this game by game here and see what you can do to get back involved. And shot by shot. Need some offensive plays from them. Looking for another goal is Pine Forest. Quick off the draw. And it's now going to be sent over to the midfield. Knocked around just a bit. And now Pine Forest, they are on the hunt once again. They're grabbing boost. And they got possession of the ball right in front of the EE e. Smith net. They are looking to put a fifth one through. But no, the defense is true. too strong. Z will stop that one for the time being. And keeps the side of 
E.E. E. Smith alive for another day. And it's going to be trying to work this one into an offensive play, but it's so tough because Pine Forens, they have just completely taken all the time on attack. And just completely taken over this game. E.E. E. Smith, the lack of shots is concerning right now coming through. And we got to see them really pick up the pace here, really start getting some shots of their own here. Because right now, I'm seeing a lot of ticks in the save markers over on the scoreboard, but I'm not seeing a lot of shots. Pine Forest, great job at just keeping this ball within their control, within that blue side of the field. Keep that ball exactly where you want it to be. The second it gets close to your net like this, you see they just make a quick clear, weave it past some defenders, and Legs might even set himself up for another opportunity. Resets the boost, wants to make a couple resets in front of the net. There's two players in net for the save. E.E. E. Smith not going to be worried about another goal just yet. Yeah, E.E. E. Smith, their defense has looked a lot sharper here in the last two minutes or so of play. But just as I say that, Boom. Legs will tack on his fourth to the night. And Pine Forest are starting it off hot here in game number one. Five nothing the score line. We're looking at about two minutes here remaining or so in this matchup in game number one. E.E. E. Smith, I am looking for an answer. I want to see one on the board. I want to see an offensive play come through and they win the kickoff. This could be it. And how about this VESL overlay they got set up here? This is looking nice and clean too. 5-0 as we hit just over two, just under two minutes left to play. E.E. E. Smith been on the back foot since the starting of the game since about four minutes left to save from divian but will it be enough no it's not fairy flying in with just enough boost to make that touch happen 6-0 our first game that score line not looking kind for ee e. smith pine forest they'll take this any day of the week yeah, 910 Ferry will tack on another one to his name, and Pine Forest will continue looking strong. The Trojans are looking to find game number one in this series, and that is for damn sure. We got about 65, 70 seconds left to play here in this one, and we'll see if Pine Forest can continue to find the offensive pressure of or if E.E. E. Smith will find one back. It is the name of the game and is the big question at play here right now. 9-10 Ferry. That's a hat trick here now for him. And that's a seventh for Pine Forest. They are Running this one up here right now. 66 seconds left to go, Josh. I don't know if we're going to keep on seeing the success from Pine Forest throughout the whole series, but as of right now, they're looking hot. Yeah, I mean, and with a minute left in the game, I mean, we can try to dream up miracle scenarios for E.E. E. Smith, but the reality is that you're down seven goals. You've got barely any time to kind of make this happen, and the game is pretty well locked in for Pine Forest. E.E. E. Smith, at this point, you're looking towards the rest of the series. You, you got to just learn from this one, see kind of what your downfalls were on the defense, and just tr try and adapt and move forward in the series, because at this point, this is all Pine Forest game. Maybe a little last-second goal might come through for E.E. E. Smith. Maybe something to kind of give them momentum moving into the next game, just to know that that... This Pine Forest team, they're not unbeatable. They're not un, uncapable of scoring on them. But who knows? 20 seconds to play. E.E. E. Smith, Pine Forest, at this point, just waiting out the clock. Yeah, we're down to the last 10 seconds or so, and it's just going to be waiting for this ball to touch the ground to end off this game number one of this best of five series here between the Pine Forest Trojans and E.E. E. Smith. So that's going to be the end of it here now. Waiting for this one to touch the ground and seals the deal for game number one. Pine Forest will take it. And that is going to be a 1-0 lead here for this beginning of the best of five. Look at the stats here. Oh my goodness. 9-10 Ferry and Legs had the day for them. And honestly, Fen Torpsy was able to get there as well and get some few shots on neck and a few demos off as well to help the team. He actually led the game in demos alongside Z. Um, you know, and we got some good plays from E.E. E. Smith as well. They got a couple shots on target, a couple big saves, um, a couple demos as well. But Pine Forest, ultimately, they had the control of that game and it shows it there in the scoreboard. We'll just see if that success that they found in game one will continue through the rest of the series. Yeah, the stats don't lie. And beyond the stats, just looking at that game, I mean, you could just see it. They had a, they had a handle on the ball the entire game. You were constantly seeing them firing off shots, and it was tough for E.E. E. Smith to really just keep up 
with the pace that Pine Forest set in that game. And I think that's something that they kind of have to step up to Pine Forest level in the rest of this series if they really want to make a significant impact here. Yeah, I agree with that one, Josh. Now let's go check out game number two and see how this series will continue to go here and see if Pine Forest can continue to find that success. And E.E. E. Smith can bounce back. I want to see an E.E. E. Smith goal on the board here, and that is for damn sure. It is going to be a shot on target. Could have Nothing to be found there right now already in this one. And it's going to be Z here getting another shot off as well. Just like this, we got a couple shots early on, but no goals to be found yet in this first 30 seconds or so, Josh. I'm still really liking the look I'm seeing already. E.E. E. Smith, I have seen them get two shots off in less than 30 seconds there. And I mean, I think we saw four shots the entire game from them last time. So already just getting those numbers back up, showing that you're still here. You've still got shots behind you. You can make these setups happen. Look off the backboard. Z wants to tap it. It's sent back out. Vivian doesn't have the boost to make the plays that he wants. So he goes... Makes the smart play, the defensive play, and goes for another clear. Try to reset that one for the team. So far, Pine Forest, I mean, at this point in the game last time, they were already, what, 2-0, 3-0? Yeah, this time last the round, Pine Forest was really putting the pedal to the metal very early on. But we see E.E. E. Smith in this one really starting to contest back a little bit more than what we saw in the last game. And I am loving what I'm watching here right now. Shot on target, almost coming through there, but... Not able to make connection on that one for E.E. E. Smith, but they've gotten their opportunities on the offense here, right? They finally found some shots on target, and it's consistent. They're able to continue this pressure on the side of Pine Forest, and that is exactly what I was looking for coming into this game too, right? You've got to take it game by game here. Yes, the game number one was tough, but, you know, just retake that momentum and put it in your favor. Yeah, exactly. You, you just have to learn from your mistakes. I talk about this all the time. Adaptability in Rocket League being able to fix your mistakes from one game to the next. Carlos already showing that E.E. E. Smith has learned from their mistakes. They're the ones to find first goal in this game right here. A clean one at that with a wide open net. Carlos makes that shot happen. E.E. E. Smith, wildly different start for them to this game. Showing they've still got something in the tank here in the series. Not just gonna let every game mirror game one yeah ee e. smith i'm really happy to see that goal on target but you could tell pine force they were not too happy about it and they're looking to get things rolling on their side of the end as well here now but we'll see what happens i want to see ee e. smith continue this pressure i mean they found a big goal there that'll open things up on a one nothing score line and we're already halfway through this game number two josh so things are moving much quicker than what we saw in game number one shot on target big defense z will stop that one Pine Forest, that was a quick and speedy shot coming on the net there, but it's going to be blocked, and E.E. E. Smith will hold on for another day, but look at this, that is a big shot on target as well. Z, another defensive effort that will go massive, a demo going to come through onto Carlos there, and now Z looking to carry this one into the offensive zone here for E.E. E. Smith, looking to find another shot and goal. Not going to be finding anything here quite yet. It is actually going to be Pine Forest applying the pressure once again. Z is the man on defense, though, just blocking it all locking it in head up off the backboard it's coming down for z there's a good save from legs shut down the opportunities from ee e. smith and if anyone's going to turn this one into an opportunity from pine forest we know it's going to be legs he makes a long carry down the field runs out a boost before he can really make the final stretch of that push make that shot happen or even make a pass happen which doesn't have it now ee e. smith makes that clear and what a, a difference over to game two. 7-0 final score in game one. And we're about a minute 15 left in this game. And it's a 1-0 game this time. Yeah, it's actually, it's 100% crazy to look at here. Coming into mm -hmm. this one, you know, it, it was like the, those seven goals too were in the first like three minutes. And then mm -hmm. it really started to slow down after that. But here in this one, we found one goal early on. And then from there, is this game going to end one nothing in favor of E.E. E. Smith? Is this series going to be tied up 1-1 after this? I mean, E.E. E. Smith, they are looking like a different team coming into this game number two. And I think that's one of the big difference makers. But Pine Forest, the offensive plays they were trying to make, 
in that last game and that were working in the last game just aren't working here now because the ee e. smith defense is just a lot more locked down they're a lot more dialed in and they're making the plays happen with just 30 seconds remaining you'd think the ee e. smith is just hey let's just lock down this defense guys and try to make something happen here because we have a one nothing lead and if we can just hold on to this that's our best chance yeah 100 percent ee smith you just try to play the time here and then the second you know the second it hits zero your your mindset is send that ball to the ground end this game move towards the next in the series fine forest last second effort here right in front of the net legs it's a second man fake off the crossbar legs is the one to actually make the touch you saw fairy fly by the ball bamboozle the defender there nobody in net and it goes bar down three seconds left are we gonna have an overtime come through here in this one or does somebody make a last second zero second rally on the play yeah we'll see it the ball touches the ground we are headed to overtime but a shot on target and it goes through no way. legs pine forest for four minutes and 57 seconds it was either a tie game or they were down by a goal. And suddenly, with three seconds left in this game, we're gonna see two goals come through for Pine Forest and lock it up. Don't even go to overtime. That was an insane ending to this game, Josh. I, I, I have nothing to say. Legs, in the last 30 seconds of the, no, forget, not the last 30 seconds, in the last 10 seconds of the game, puts the entire game on his back finds the goal to tie it up, and then finds the zero-second shot, the zero-second goal to to take the win for themselves to one Pine Forest. Now you're on match point legs. I mentioned in map match one, map one, we might have seen the star player of this team, and I think we've just cemented that position for himself on this team because that was a sight to behold right there at the end. Yeah, he's dominant on the server right now, but not only that, he is uh, making a show of it as well with just three seconds to go. Call him clutch. That is a uh, insane play, and it's really hard to make those shots without it touching the ground. Like, uh, at the very end, you mm -hmm. literally are playing like it's like keeping the balloon up. You know that game you'd play when you were a kid and you had to keep the balloon up? It's like <laughs> the same thing, man, It's and it's absolutely unreal. Great plays coming through from legs alone, like you mentioned. And I'm willing to see. I, I wonder if it's going to continue coming into game three, if he's still going to be a force to reckon with on the field, if he's going to be able to stay consistent with it. But I do want to give some props to E.E. E. Smith for the fact that they played a lot better of a game coming into that game number two than what we saw in game number one. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we had less than half the goals total in that game. E.E. E. Smith, not only did they find the first goal, but they kept it at that for so so long and they really locked down on both the defense and just creating their own offensive opportunities which was something they just had just about none of there in game one so they really changed things around i don't think it's out of the question to see ee e. smith take game three game four maybe bring us to a game five but man they they really got to lock in now because we're in reverse sweep territory ee e. smith it's up to them to try and take this series to game four and game five. But I think game three is ready to get started here. We're going to send it right over. Yeah, I'm super stoked to see how these teams do come out here in this game number three, Josh, because it's going to be Pine Forest right now, who currently lead to nothing. And if E.E. Smith, I mean, like you mentioned, we're in reverse sweep territory. They got to win three in a row where the side of Pine Forest only has one game to find. And it's going to be hell of a fight if you're E.E. Smith to try to come back from this one and it's gonna be Pine Forest immediately with offensive plays as well sending it over to that E.E. Smith goal and just trying to make something happen early on look at that Z's trying to get a trying to find the clear but it is going to be behind force to keep this one in play keep it in the offensive play Ooh, a little bit of a miss out there a shot on target for e smith that is going to be an early goal coming through from divine and that is going to be a one to nothing advantage for e, e. smith similar to what we saw in that last game they find that early advantage one goal not too far into the game now they just got to carry it through and try to close this one out another early goal from e, e. smith this time even earlier than that of game two but I mean, we saw what happened when you tried to make the whole game ride on just one goal. You got to make bigger opportunities for yourself. You got to make bigger leads for yourself before you have legs just clutching it out in that last 10 seconds of the game. But E.E. E. Smith already off to a great start, showing us they've still got the chops to keep themselves in this series. 
and already keeping the momentum up, continually centering this ball. Carlos just barely misses that touch in the corner, and it means that KBL gets the pickup. Wants to start something for Pine Forest. Legs coming in from the skies. Tap, two players hit that ball. It's pandemonium in front of the net. Slowly rolls in, but it's cleared out by E.E. E. Smith. No fear of a goal today. Yeah, no goal to be found here quite yet. 1-0. The scoreline here remains for E.E. E. Smith. This is very similar to what we saw in game number two, but... The thing is, you never know what trick behind Forrest has up their sleeves, right, Josh? And we saw it there in that last game alone, and there's another shot opportunity. They're so close, but yet so far, as Pine Forrest will remain trailing 1-0. E.E. Smith, I'm liking what they're doing here early in this game, number two. If they can just carry this through, they've got to keep the offensive pressure on and try to find this second goal to really secure a two-goal cushion. Uh, that would be much appreciated on their end, of course, and it'd make them feel a lot more relaxed on the server. But we'll see as time goes on three minutes to go on the clock or so in this game so lots of time to work with for both of these two teams that's why if you're ee e. smith you can't really just hunker down and play defense quite yet there's just so much time remaining you've really started got to keep going after a second goal here to try to build up this score line a little bit further help set yourself up a little bit better later in the game and here's a great play coming through it's actually be centered on the pine forest net but no one able to follow through there for ee e. smith and find a shot opportunity a little bit of a bump there on the boost but it's going to go in favor of Pine Forest as they now translate this one into an offensive play of their own and a shot on target and a goal will come through from Fentorpsy. And that's going to be a goal 1-1 near halfway through this game and we're in an even slate. I think that's the first time we've really seen this player right here too, Torpsy, kind of get in on the action here from Pine Forest. We saw a lot of goals from Legs in game one and we saw... A, is KBL Corey a new player? I swear we had... Ferry was, 100%. I think, the, the player earlier on in the series. Yeah, we had a little mid-series sub I didn't even realize. But Pine Forest, nonetheless, seeing that third player kind of make their mark in this series, showing that the roster is a little bit deeper than just legs. And Ferry, of course, they've, they've got the sub coming through here. So showing that we've got a wider roster than just that, that initial three that we saw. And they still know how to get results. And... Show them on the field, ties it up. E.E. E. Smith, once again, a strong start to the game, but has kind of stagnated in terms of pressure. Kind of plateaued. You're not seeing the same kind of shots from them. Pine Forest starting to get their hands on the ball a lot more here. Yeah, we got a minute and 40 remaining. So this next goal is going to have a big impact in the say of this game. And here's a breakaway coming through, but not able to find it. And that is going to be a big defensive effort coming through from E.E. Smith. Not able to find the goal or the Trojans from Pine Forest. And now fighting for this one in the crease. It's going to bounce up. Sends it over towards midfield. Drops it down. And we got an even fight for this ball here right now. Even fight for possession and even fight for the next goal to determine who's going to be able to take this game. And it's going to be bouncing in front of the E.E. Smith net right now. They're going to want to make sure they clear this one quickly. A shot on target, but it is going to be quickly sent away from Devine or Devane. Now, it's going to be tossed up. One minute remaining, Fundy. It's on crunch time. E.E. E. Smith, you... I don't want to let this go to overtime, if you ask me. I think you want to secure the lead in regulation, if you can, and start working on this reverse sweep. You kind of just chip away at it game by game. You won't have to worry about it too, too much. Don't look too far in the future. That's the key to the reverse sweep play in the here and now. So far, Pine Forest continually dropping this ball in front of that E.E. E. Smith net, not allowing too, too many opportunities for them. Pine Forest, we've seen what they can do in these last second plays. 20 seconds to go. Will we take this to overtime? Will legs allow it to happen? Yeah, legs will not be letting this slide here quite yet. We'll see what happens, though. E.E. E. Smith, I mean, I've seen some great plays from Carlos and Co. Z as well. All players getting engaged, so it's really anybody's game. We might see... An overtime here, but last second goal. Ooh, nope. We're going to our Top first ground. overtime of the series here, Josh. And, you know, Pine Forest on series point. A lot is on the line for E.E. E. Smith to try to close this one out and try to force this one to a game four. But only time can tell as this overtime is underway. And Legs is immediately looking for possession of this ball and looking to translate it into an offensive play for himself. Bouncing off the backboard and just missing it there. Not able to get the shot on target. Now bouncing in front of the net here of E.E. Smith. Both players missing it. Could get scary. Tossed up in the air, though. And actively fighting for this one as it goes. A shot on target. It's going to dribble, but it's not going to go in the net. 
Not quite yet. This game is not over. E.E. E. Smith will stay alive and live another day once again as they look hunting here for a goal of their own and try to force this series a further game and see if they can continue their tear on the offense as now it's going to be sent over but Pine Force not letting anything slide. They're going to send this one out immediately. But Josh, this one's getting scrappy. Pine Forest had all the opportunities in front of them, but the post can be your best friend or your worst enemy here in Rocket League and Pine Forest not being too, too friendly with the net today. Although we did see a bar down goal from them earlier. So maybe it's just having a bit of wow. an argument there, but end right at the end, Twerpsy nails it as the ball's pretty well centered up from legs. Look at that perfect setup. Z just barely can't tap it. The defender flies by and Pine Forest recognizes their opening and in overtime takes the series 3-0. Yeah, very nicely done there from Pine Forest. I mean, it, it got scrappy though. From the 7-0 game that we mm -hmm. saw in game number one, I was like, okay, well, will we see Pine Forest continue to keep this up all series long? And, you know, they did. They won the series 3-0, but it was a very different game two and three to what we saw in that game number one. Games two and three, both ending 2-1 in favor there of the pine squad and it's overall very very interesting to see that come through right i mean they were able to find two last minute goals and almost both of those games yeah i mean of course that literally a last minute goal there in overtime but yeah of course game two their legs being able to just kind of clutch it out in that last 10 15 seconds for the team made everything possible there in game three and ee e. smith as much as they really started to look like a, a solid squad in those last two games they were just a little bit too far behind in the series they weren't able to make it happen but i think we're going to send it to a quick one two minute break we'll get the next teams ready up here stem ec versus fairmont and we will come right back to you with all the action.
Welcome back, everybody, to some Rocket League action here on the VESL League. This time, we're coming in with Lumberton versus Fairmont. We just saw E.E. E. Smith versus Pine Forest. Pine Forest took it in a pretty convincing 3-0 there, although E.E. E. Smith definitely started to catch up towards the end of that series. We're going to have to see all the action here in Lumberton versus Fairmont. Once again, brand new teams to us here on the desk. So I'm excited to see how these teams stack up against each other. Yeah, the competition in VESL has been great so far, and I am so ready for more of it. We got three more games on the slate for us here this evening, Josh. We've already got one done, so a lot of Rocket League action coming our way. Let's get it started here with game number one between Lumberton and Fairmont. Let's get it going. I could not be more excited to carry on with some more Rocket League action. So here we are, Lumberton, Fairmont, going to be scrapping in here. Now, we got Sway, we got Yin, we got Aspo, and we got Chewy, we got Juzo, and we got the Project Man. So let's get this one going. Quick starts. We saw shallow shot onto net there. Really nothing to write home with, home about from Lumberton. As they continue to pepper this net with shots right here. It's off the post. Not going to have the angle on that one, but showing the aggression right off the bat. I love that when you're, when you're matching up into game one. Neither of these teams know too, too much about each other's style, and you just start getting aggressive and making these shots go your way. Sway takes it all the way from the skies. How many how many resets was in that play? Three? Four? Yeah, that was, that was absolutely crazy. Lumberton gonna find a hot start here in this game. one nothing. the score line, only 33 seconds in. It's really up to Fairmont to answer back here and try to find one of their own right now, but the pressure gonna be trying to stay in favor of Lumberton as they do keep this one going. It is going to be a shot looking to come through here now. Going to go near on target, but it's going to be a quick little save coming through there from Juzo. And now, minute down on the clock or so. Only one goal in so far, so this is still a very even game, you know, through this first minute or so of play here. Because now it is going to be looking like a shot on target to come through, but nothing to be found here quite yet. I think we're seeing a little, a little bit of an issue with the overlay here, but... As far as I'm aware, we're still looking at Lumberton versus Fairmont here. I'm going to keep casting off of that assumption. Lumberton in the blue, Fairmont in the orange right there. And already for Lumberton, it's another one. And it comes from Sway. Two in a row here in about a minute and ten in terms of game time. Sway already getting the goals under his team's belt and making this lead larger and larger for Lumberton. Yeah, Lumberton, finding a second one will really help out and just finding that cushion to sit on here rather than just, you know, you let in one goal and then game's over, done and dusted. No, you know, you're at least able to have a bit more of a cushion to work with. And making a third goal as well from Yin. They're starting to heat up and they are tacking it on the scoreboard. 3 nothing in favor of Lumberton right now over Fairmont. Just a reminder for everybody watching. Uh, but yeah, that is... A great and hot start coming through for them. They're looking to carry on their success even further in this game. And we'll see if we can see the side of Fairmont answer back to one of their own. Yeah, Fairmont, at this point in the game, we're seeing it's looking a lot like game one of our last series. And, you know, we know how the rest of the games went there. We saw a lot tighter score lines. So if we do see a high scoring game one, no surprise if we go into game two and see something like a 1-0, a 1-1 scoreline all the way throughout until the end of that game there because all it takes is that 60-second break in between those games for teams to kind of reset, get mental reset, give your hands a little bit of a break, and then you can kind of figure out exactly what this other team is doing to you and maybe try to shut that down. But so far, Lumberton has yet to even worry about shots on their own net, really. Juzo, yeah. hold on, might have something set up, but it's just sent straight out to the corner. Yeah, that's the thing. The Lumberton defense is also looking quite strong as well. Even when their offensive plays aren't coming through, a Sway will find his fourth goal here now. Putting this one down to a 4-0 scoreline, just nearing halfway through this game here. And it is going to be Lumberton who have really put the pedal to the metal here right now in this matchup and just carrying the scoreline even further in front of us. Juzo, though, like you said, he had a great opportunity coming through there on that last play, but just Lumberton very good at translating these defensive plays into offensive plays and into good offensive plays. And that has been the difference maker here so far as we see another one from Sway come through. Fourth goal on the game, by the way, Josh. 
yeah, he already found a hat trick right before that halfway mark in the game and immediately just wants to keep padding the stats. Turns out Sway does have the answers because he's got four goals right now. We're barely even halfway through this game, just a little bit over. And Lumberton, no sweat right now in this game when you've got Sway on the roster. Yeah, he's been a vital piece to this team as he hunts for a fifth goal as well right now. Being a big difference maker here in this game. Because it's now going to be shot into the corner here from the side of Lumberton. But nothing to be found here quite yet. Another shot going through and Yin will actually Ooh. find it this time. Second goal for Yin. So Yin and Sway have found all six goals here combined through the first three minutes and three seconds of play. Very nice one from Yin. Very nice angle as well on that one to allow the Lumberton squad up 6-0 here in this one. They're starting to bump the scoreline. Very similar to the game one we saw in our last series as well, Josh. Yeah, very high scoring game one. Typically transitions into more of an even, more of a, a calculated game two from both teams. But man, Sway's got a lot of momentum right now and even a few of his teammates are finding goals here and there as well. So I don't know, does... Does it slow down from Lumberton, or do we just see them take this through all the way through the entire series? Because 6-0 is nothing to scoff at. I mean, I know we saw a 7-0 game previously, so I'm not counting it out just yet. Fairmont, though, we got to lock in for basically the rest of the series because the shots keep coming. It's SV this time, and that's 7-0. Could be yeah, our that's... final scoreline, but I don't even want to say that just yet. Yeah, I don't want to say that quite yet either there. I think that's SV's first goal as well, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because the other six were found by Yin and Sway. Four for Sway, two for Yin, one for Acefo. And now a 7-0 scoreline is uh, looking real sharp here for the Lumberton squad. They're going to look to carry this one through in the remainder of the series. And not only just the remainder of the series, the remainder of the game by how it's looking with a minute going. It is no. going to be Fairmont side. Oh my goodness. Sway will pick up his fifth. Uh, just a missed play there on Fairmont's side. Sway, he's going to shoot it in. Gets demoed in the air and it's just going to bounce. And just barely missing that one. Bounces into the net and the side of Lumberton will find the rate. The afterlife goal, like it's MW2. I don't even know what I just watched, Sway. I, I, I That would blow me away. You get demoed and then you're just like, wait, hold on. Ball keeps bouncing, ball keeps bouncing, ball keeps bouncing again for SV. Was that a third for SV? Second or third, I believe. 9-0 though, all three of these players racking up goals. Very nicely done here. Everybody's spreading the love here right now, as it is now gonna be the last minute of play here. Crunch time for these two teams. 50 seconds on the clock and if you are the side of Fairmont though just for your own momentum purposes you want to get one right you don't want to you don't want to go down in this game here and not able to find it right now so we'll see if the difference can come through here very momentarily nine nothing though do you think we see uh Lumberton approach double digits what do you think Josh they've still got time to make it happen we've seen how quickly they can find shots and and convert just random clears and and things into goals so all you got to do is send it wide and then see maybe SV or Sway just carry that one down into the net. But, I mean, double digits, that would just kind of, that would set a not the greatest tone for the series for Fairmont, to say the least. Lumberton, though, already starting off super, super hot for themselves. Looking to see if they can keep this shutout happen in the last few seconds. It will. We're going to go to game two once again. Running under the assumption that we are still watching Lumberton versus Fairmont here. Not going to be Sway, Yin, and SV just having a beautiful, beautiful game one for the entire team. Sway, of course, a standout there, both on the scoreboard and in game. But you can't discount those two other players as well. They were making things happen all around the field. Whenever you see someone in Rocket League with a thousand plus score on their name after the game, you know they were a standout player in that game. But I also want to say for Fairmount side, Juzo looked very, very well in that one as well. Finding some mm. opportunities, finding some openings. I believe he had two shots, two saves, um, and then two of something else. I can't remember quite what it was, but it, it was looking good on his end as well. So very, very nicely done here from that side of Fairmount with Juzo there. Uh, you're just looking to bounce back here a little bit more coming into this game number two. Try to find a couple goals for yourself. Even if you can't, 
find the game win here on this series, you're looking to at least build up your momentum a little bit more and, you know, lock it in for the future matches here. This is just week one of many weeks here of the qualifiers. I believe it's four weeks. So a lot of Rocket League to be played here for all these teams. But let's get it going in game number two and continue on with this action. So let's get it going. And this is where Fairmont has the opportunity to kind of bring this series to a halt, right? Bring that momentum to a halt from Lumberton. But it is not stopping. Nowhere to be seen. SV right off the kickoff. Off the wall from Sway's initial touch. And nobody is there from the side of Fairmont. SV flies through. Has an easy, easy shot on a wide open net. And already... Brings the lead into their hands. Fairmont starting down by one goal after that last game. It, it's It's got to be taxing a little bit on the mental. You got to keep a cool head here and just keep yourself in this game, in this series. SV wants to find another one. The angle just a bit wide. As Juzo going to take it into his own hands. Little air carry here. Not going to be any really any teammates to follow up on that one. A couple good demos, though. There's nobody from Lumberton on the map right now. Yeah, Lumberton was all down there for a few moments. A lot of those demos, like you mentioned, coming through here, getting scrappy in this game number two between these two teams, as it is going to be Lumberton, though, who does remain in the advantage. They found that early goal, but it's been a lot slower here in the last 30 seconds or so. A little bit more even play from both teams, and we'll see Juzo. He's been keeping the side of Fairmont involved heavily in this game. A little bit of a deflection up top. They're going to drop it down and it is going to be a shot on target and Sway is right back into his ways and finding a goal here now. one nothing or 2 nothing rather, sorry, for the side of Lumberton as now it's going to be Fairmont who are really looking for an answer back. Sway right back to patting his stats as well. First goal in the game for him. Expected. I kind of expected him to show up eventually in this game it was just a matter of time here look at this masterful control on the ball right there from sv not able to make it past the second and third defender but he's doing a great job when he's in some a kind of 1v1 situation with a defender almost nobody stands a chance he's got a lot of finesse in like the slow kind of control based situations when you just need to weave that ball past the defender oh it could have been a shot there from fairmont but they're not able to send it through two players on the defense there and the save pretty easy from Lumberton. Yeah, the save will look good there from Lumberton's end as Sway though, looking for another shot opportunity and it's gonna go through. Splash will find the goal. Sway up three nothing now, helping find the side of Lumberton, another goal over Fairmont here. A little bit slower pace though than what we saw in the last game, you know? I mean, the, the defensive efforts are definitely getting stronger here right now from the side of Fairmont. We just got to see this translate into some offensive pressure, and that's been the game changer here between these two teams. As Lumberton, their offensive pressure has been dialed in, and they've been looking good in that fact. Running off the offensive plays of Sway as he goes up, tries to find another off the backboard, bounce it through, but just a little bit off. Got the double touch. Not able to put it home, though, and find the back of the net, but you can tell Lumberton, they're still hunting for a goal here. They're still trying to rub this score line and add on a fourth goal in this one. We're nearing the halfway marker in this matchup. Sway, does he do it again? Yes, he does. Hat-trick on this one. Once again in the first couple of minutes, Sway will have himself a hat-trick. And now a 4 nothing score line. Three of those coming from Sway. Yeah, SV kicked it off and Sway, the player to bring it home. We're not even halfway through this game and Lumberton already looking just as dominant as they were in game one. And that's sometimes just how the season shakes out too. You got a tough week one match if you're Fairmont, if you're EE e. Pines from our earlier series. But you gotta just move through. You gotta look towards the future. Still a lot of this series to be played here. Lumberton, no sign of slowing down. No sign of stopping the pressure. SV right back on that ball. And Sway never even going to let a shot come out of Fairmont. That's been the big issue here is shutting them down before the shots can even happen. Yeah, Fairmont trying to get something going here. And it's just giving a lot of control over to the side of Lumberton here. As they go away up in the sky and try to get something done. As now down to a minute 45. So we're nearing the close of this game number two. We're going to see if the side of Fairmont can get one 
in the back of the net here shortly. But it's going to be Sway. He's just always available there. Midfield, ready to find it. Takes it up. Shot on target. Going to be a little bit wide. Going to hit the post there now. And just bouncing around here through the midfield. Fairmont. Going to try to clear this one out here. If there's anything they can do to try to make something happen. Bounces up, though. And here we go. Could be a little bit of opportunity, but Yin, quick on the defense, quick to make a save. And now it is going to be the project man trying to find an opening. And it's actually going to be bounced across the crease here right now. But Juzo, he's in play. Juzo's got it, as his name states. And now just down to a minute or so, Josh. This one's definitely slowed down from what we saw in that last game and just what we saw early in this game. Yeah, I mean, we're not up towards that 7-8. And a goal percentage there. Goal count. SV, though, wants to change that quickly. With a minute left in the game, brings it up to a five-goal lead. Looking to bring himself his own hat trick here because Sway found one last game as well. And SV, both SV and Yin were just singular goals away from finding their own hat tricks there. So I think SV wants to catch up in this game right now because when you're this far ahead as well, when you have such a lead built up, you kind of just have the opportunities and you 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 have the the space and the margin of error to kind of just go through make some crazy offensive plays make these long carries and just try to go for these shots and with the mechanics we're being we're seeing from lumberton right now it's working out for them more often than not send three players at the net sv and he secures the hat trick there off of yin's pass Lumberton are looking strong here. I know this is just week one here, Josh, of the VESL Spring Qualifiers, but they are definitely looking like a team to beat here, at least from the Sandhills region. I'm interested to continue to see how they perform as, you know, the season carries on even further. Sway, though, going to be carrying this one. We've seen him play all game long, and he's looking to do it. Juzo on the defense, not going to be enough, and Sway will find a fourth here on this one. 725 scores so far in this game. 15 seconds to go. Do you think that uh, Lumberton finds another one in these last 15 seconds, or do you think we end 7 0 here, Josh? I'm not going to say no, but I think that Fairmont might have it in them to just halt the pressure, not allow anything more to come through. Not that it really has much effect on the final score at this point or on the outcome of the game. A victory is a victory, but shutting down anything more you can sometimes helps out. Might help you kind of set yourself up for the future of the series. But right now, with the way Lumberton is playing, I I don't know if we see anything other than a 3-0 to come through. Fairmont, a really tough time dealing with Sway and Co. right now. As you can see, four from Sway in that one. I think he's at nine goals total in the series right now. And ASV able to bring home his own hat trick there in game two. Looking to move into game three just as strong as Lumberton. Fairmont, here in our second series of the day, we've got another team back in reverse sweep territory. You've got three games straight that you got to win. That's a big mountain to climb. We got to see if this team has it in them. I will say from the Fairmont side, I was excited to see the Project Man and Chewy get a little bit more involved in that game, get a couple demos in the board, get a couple shots in the board as well. Exactly what we like to see. But without further ado, let's head right into game number three here. I want to see some more Rocket League action. I want to see if Fairmount can get one on the board here, if they can find a game. Like you said, a tall task to get three games in a row. But if they can start it off and take it game by game, there's potential there. But Sway and SV, you can tell they are hunting for an early goal, just like we saw in those previous two games. Yeah, already off the kickoff. Making this play from the air a couple touches. And was that off of a Fairmont player? I think a defender just barely touched it in the end there, too. I don't think it mattered, though. Sway had a great angle. It had just enough momentum to keep moving forward. And such an awkward play for the defenders there. Yeah, that's going to be an early 1-0 lead here for the side of Lumberton right now. 13 seconds off the clock, and they've been phenomenal at finding these early goals here in these games as well, just to cement that lead early on in this series. As we do see another play looking to come through, they're looking to stack this one up to a two-goal advantage very early on in this one. 30 seconds down and off the clock here. Now, a lot of bumps coming through here from Chewy, actually, able to get it in the hands of Juzo. Very nice play from Fairmont there to just retake possession of that ball but Juzo is going to get the demo on him and now it's going to be the side of Lumberton back onto the offense and Yin will find the goal 2-0 for the side of Lumberton very nicely done here 
30 to 42 seconds off the clock and to be able to find a two goal lead so early on in this match on a series point match as well for the side of lumberton it's that substantial and that important yeah just continually kind of showing off to the stream a little bit here showing that they are going to be a force to be reckoned with here in this qualifier it may only be week one but we're already seeing some standout teams some standout players I'm thinking about lags from Pine Forest. I'm thinking about Sway. And honestly, this entire Lumberton roster right here, Sway, SV, and Yin, all three of them putting in work. Yin from halfway across the court, across the field, just sends it. Across the Sees pitch. The across the pitch, yeah. We're throwing our words here now, Josh. Across, across the rink. Oh, okay. <laughs> that one's pushing it. We're not playing. What's the uh, Rock Lee Mote the Ice Puck? I, I can't remember the name of it. Is it just called like Rock I think soccer? they might just call it hockey? Pucks or... Pucks? I know, yeah, they, I I know they call the, the basketball one Hoops. Hoops, I yeah. I, I love me some good Hoops. But we'll see hoops what goes on here. Yeah, Hoops and Pucks. Those are my two favorites. <laughs> All the Rock League players right now are going to be flaming us because we don't remember the hockey game mode, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. 3-0 the scoreline here for Lumberton. We carry on in this one. Minute and a half are down. Looking for another shot. And Sway is getting stylish here now. Off the crossbar. Back to his car and in. That's going to be a 4-0 lead now. Picked up for the side of Lumberton off the backbone of Sway. And Sway, I believe that was his second, third goal here so far. If he can go hat-tricks for all three games, and he, this one does go to a fourth or fifth, we'll see. But Sway, he has the momentum in his favor on his loan sub. I just think so early into this game, we're already seeing a 4-0 lead. Fairmont, we've seen what they've done pretty well all series. They have yet to find a goal in the series. So tough for them right now. And Lumberton kind of just playing around on the pitch. But look at that Let's Project go! Man right as I say it. Project Man finds one. Could this be the beginning? That the is beginning the beginning of the Josh. reverse sweep. That's the beginning of something. It might not be the reverse sweep, but it is the beginning of something. The Project Man getting on the board. And not only the Project Man, all of Fairmont finding their first goal of the series here. May have came in game three, but it came and looking good while doing so. It is now going to be a game number three score. Four to one, nearing halfway through this one. But still a lot of be work to be done from Fairmont, but at least they got one started, right? I mean, that's all they... That's all I was really asking for, is getting a little bit of a start on the scoreline here, trying to get something going. But Boom. Yin immediately back to the Lumberton ways, and it's a 5-1 to one scoreline. Yin to third player on the team, and in game three is going to find the hat trick as well. So hat tricks all around for the side of Lumberton. As they bring it to another four goal lead, this time though, not going to be a shutout. Fairmont has made sure of that. They've gotten themselves something in this game. Maybe a bit of a moral victory for themselves. Just like, we we know we can do it. We know we can set it up. But, man, it's tough up against this just unending aggression. These unending shots from the side of Lumberton. Yin finds his fourth. Yin in game three here. He wants to pick up the slack from these last two games. He let SV and Sway have a little bit too much shine in game one and two. So he needs this game for himself right here. Yeah, Yin's about to drop 10 here. Just to answer back for all the goals that he let his teammates pick up Juzo. on the first oh. two games. Juzo almost had an opportunity there with Sway. The defense is almost just as good as that offense that we've seen from him so far. And the aggression will continue now. Knocked around in the midfield. Actually sent over towards the Fairmont net. Or actually, sorry, not the Fairmont net. The Lumberton net. But they're going to hold on for another day. And Lumberton... Gonna be fighting for this one in the corner, looking for something on target here now. Sent over towards the midfield for the crossfire, but nothing to be found. Yin play the defense, tries to take it into the offensive zone here now. A little bit of a shot on target, but big, big defensive plays. I believe that was Juzo, or no, it wasn't Juzo, it was Project Man maybe. But regardless, big defensive plays, and now it's actually an offensive opportunity. Juzo got it, looking for something of his own, but not to be found. The defense is strong from Lumberton. I'm running away from Fairmont right now, too. Every single second this ball is not in that Lumberton net is a second wasted because, unfortunately, you're five goals down in a Game 3 series point situation. You just don't have time to be messing around on the defense, to be messing around whiffing shots, really. So 
Lumberton. Time ticks away and Lumberton becomes seconds and seconds closer to this victory. Chewy, can you find it? Chewy, no boost to be able to put any substantial velocity on that ball or even turn to take that shot. Tough one from Fairmont as Lumberton becomes seconds and inches closer to this week one victory in a, in a strong, dominant 3-0 fashion. Yeah, I mean, they are looking good here. And with there's 35 seconds remaining, it's very, very difficult to try to keep this one going if you are from the side of Fairmont. SV will find that goal there. Tack it up to a 7-1 to one advantage here now, picked up from the side of Lumberton. And that is going to be a strong advantage to have for themselves. I think that might have been the nail in the coffin there, Josh. And that is going to allow another 3-0 to come through here for us on these matches this Friday evening. 30 seconds to go in this one. And uh, the six goal differential just might be a little bit too strong. I think we might see both teams just trying to pad the a stats a little bit, bit more. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. But uh, both teams just looking to pad the stats maybe a little bit more here in these last few moments. We'll see if we see another goal come through or not. But that being said, it is going to be a three nothing here in favor of Lumberton. And they're going to advance to one and here now so far in this BESL week one qualifier for $25,000. This is North Carolina's Varsity Esports and STEM League. Could not be more excited to be part of it. Yeah, great start to the spring season here. These spring qualifiers as Lumberton, once again, Lumberton in the blue, Fairmont in the orange right there. We had to have that confirmed for us from production. But yeah, Lumberton takes the 3-0 victory. This time, it's Yin who's up there over the hat trick, up to four goals there, taking a point from Sway earlier in the series. And man, just a strong, strong series. I've got I've got nothing else to say. I mean, they put it all out there on the field. They were not afraid to continue with that aggression and just keep racking up those points. They wanted to set a statement at the starting of this league. And I think they're definitely going to be a team to continue watching throughout this season. 100% agree with you on that one there, Josh. And we did see Fairmont actually come through as well and find... Um, improvements on their play throughout that series. I watched it with my own two eyes. I literally saw improvement. The Project Man was able to find that goal in the last game. They were improving as a team as the series went on. So I'm very excited to see how they will continue to play as the season goes on here as a whole. Um, but that being said, we are going to send this one over to a very short break as we are getting prepared to head into our third series of the night. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for some more VESL action. Once again, my name is Jackson, joined alongside Josh for some more banger matchups coming our way. This time around, Josh, we got another one on the slate, and it is going to be North Johnson versus Southern Lee. And this one, I mean, we saw the overlay. We saw the overlay yeah. last game, but now we actually got these players coming through and actually playing this game. Yeah, 
once again. Yeah, we did. We did see those both of these teams in the overlay there earlier. But to recap from our earlier earlier series of the day, we saw Pine Forest with a 3-0 up against E.E. E. Smith. And then we just saw Lumberton take down Fairmont in another 3-0 series. That one looking a lot more dominant for the side of Lumberton than, say, Forest Hills was in our first series of the day. But nonetheless, both were 3-0s. We're going to go through and see if maybe these teams can kind of break that 3-0 chain that we've got going. See if we can have some a little bit tighter series, tighter matches to come through here. Maybe we won't see a game one that's just a 7-0 scoreline. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. But without further ado, let's get started with game number one here of this series. Just a reminder, it is going to be between North Johnson and Southern Lee. So let's get into the gameplay action here now. Josh, back with it between these two teams. This time we got we got Daniel, we got FaZe Mexican, we got... Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that third one. I'm going to go with uh, Jix or something like that. Uh, Cholo, we got Eluzine and uh, Yee Chris. Yeah, G, G, G clips you, G clips you. G, yeah, we'll, we'll, G yeah. clips you. Maybe we'll call him G. That'll work for us here. Illusion, yay, Chris, from the side of South Lee as well. And now the overlay actually fitting for the series here. No confusion on that one. Already slower starts than we're seeing in a lot of our earlier games here, and very very scrappy around the midfield. Daniel tries to make it clear, but Yay Chris right there for the contestion. Sends it mid for his team, but neither of these teams gonna allow the balls to be centered for too, too long. At least for long enough for a, a second, third player to come in and make some kind of shot happen. Yeah, and now with this one, it's gonna be North Johnson trying to take this in for an offensive shot, and it's gonna go through. Daniel will find it. And that is gonna be North Johnson for a one to nothing lead here. A minute into game number one. Versus South Lee, sneaking it past two defenders as well. Very high quality shot coming through. Followed the shot as well. So just in case there was a little bit of a bump, he can play for that quick little rebound and try to force it through. Very nicely done as North Johnston now. Can they carry on with this lead? Can they close out the game number one? That is the question. But a lot of time to remain for South Lee to try to bounce back and find one for themselves. Cole trying to keep his team in play here. Clears it out far, but it's G who's actually picked it up here, and he just takes it all around the world there, all around the backboards, using all his boost while he's at it, but he wasn't able to actually secure himself back to 100, which means he's working on just no resources here. Really has to try and get that back. He's back up to 100, maybe back to make a play. As once again, we're seeing kind of back to just rallies in the midfield. An air carry comes through, set up off the backboard. Shot might happen, and it's the angle the chip from Daniel right out the corner right out the sand trap that's right we're referencing every sport here today <laughs> hey the masters is on so it, you got you got Topical. you got that going for you yeah very you, you've been following the times you've been reading the newspaper Josh but uh what can I say two nothing the score line here minute and 50 down North Johnston showing their dominant force here on the pitch right now as it is going to be another pressured Press. shot. And there's the hat trick oh. for Daniel. Beautiful, high quality shot. Once again, coming through big clear as well. Just from coast to coast. Ye Chris trying to knock it away. And honestly, good effort up that one as well. Just not enough pressure on that ball. And that's going to allow this one up to a 3 nothing lead. We went from, you know, the first minute of play being scoreless. And now defining three in the last minute from North Johnston. It is up to South Lee to ramp up the defensive efforts and try to translate something into an offensive play. And that's a painful one as Chris too. You're chasing that ball down so, so close to that net and you just can't knock it away far enough. Daniel, second goal in the game for himself, I believe. Third. Continues. Third, actually, he's on the hat trick. Yeah, I thought we saw another player find that first one, but I guess we've, we've just been seeing so many goals in these past few series. I can't even keep which goal is who's straight now. North Johnston. Sets up in front of the net once again. A nice little pinch out from Chris. It means they do have time to maybe work with something here. But you have to get it past that wall of the midfield that is North Johnston right now. Yeah, and that is no easy challenge. What No easy task whatsoever. It is a bit of a challenge for sure. Yee Chris will find one back for South Lee. And we got a bit of a game on our hands here now. Josh cutting that lead down to two. 
will definitely benefit the side of South Lee. They bounce it off the top of the car. The defender's not able to make a play on it. They both went looking for boost, and then the net was wide open, essentially, for the side of Yi Chris to find a play to come through. Now, two-goal game, like I mentioned, with two minutes to play, a lot of time to work with for both of these two squads. I'm excited to see how this game progresses and if we'll see another one come through for South Lee, but it's actually North Johnson with G Clips You gonna find it now and put it to another three goal advantage. Four to one, the score line as we're just under two minutes of play left. Nice little Super Bowl ad there too on the, uh, I haven't seen that one quite yet. South Lee continually getting clipped right now from North Johnson as they bring it to a 4-1 score line. Very, very favorable for them as G's not done. He flies in there, max speed, trying to continually make plays for his team. That's a wide open net. That could be something, but Joel is right there on the ball. FaZe Mexican sends it up and FaZe Mexican finds it. Pops it high, just under the crossbar. Bring it their fifth goal of the game. And similar to some previous games we've seen in this series, I think with where we're at, with the time, with the score differential, North Johnston, you've done enough to lock in the game for yourself, almost guaranteed. You just got to play half solid defense for the rest of the game, and you should be all good to take this one home. But they're not done just yet. They want to keep goals coming, and they keep bringing this ball right in front of South Lee's net. I will say, Josh, I think that South Lee, after that North Johnson found that goal to retake that three goal advantage and push it to a four to one score line. I think after that, it was just a little bit demoralizing on their end just because the, the lead the was growing shot. and it's 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 the identical shot. It looks, it looks like a little bit of a, what do you call it? A, Deja um, vu. Yeah, it's just a loft shot. Like just like literally just picks it up and it, it slows the ball down so much, but it's such an interesting play to allow that one to happen. Now a six to one score line. And like I mentioned, I mean, when, once the scoreline hit 4-1 in favor for North Johnson, I think South Lee is starting to lose a little bit of a grasp on the game here. So I think they're just going to be looking forward to a clean slate coming into the next one. I mean, it's still possible to come back from, but very, very difficult uh, if you are from the South Lee side. So I think they're definitely just looking for a clean slate here to move forwards and, and try to get something open up the next one. As we do see a shot from Illusion, though, and that's going to bring this one back within a little bit of reach as South Lee tacks the second one onto the board and they find some goals and progression for themselves. South Lee, 50 seconds left. I don't know if it's enough time to make four goals happen for yourself. It definitely can happen, but it's going to be tough up against North Johnston here. They've been showing out strong all game. But we, now we've seen Chris and Illusion now, both players on this team, find respective goals for themselves. So we know that there's depth to this roster. We know that they have a lot of mechanics under them. Cholo almost found that one came from the skies but wasn't able to tap it in there at the end Chris trying his best but the time just running away and North Johnston with 20 seconds left it's a hundred percent safe to say you have locked down game one you are headed to game two one zero yeah I think that's a safe safe thing to say for sure Josh here as now Will we see just at least maybe one more goal squeak through for the uh, for the stat line for for the stat line maybe? Nope, it's gonna touch the ground. That's gonna be North Johnson finding game number one. North Johnson High School locking it in. One nothing is the score line here through the best of five. Daniel gonna actually pick up three goals for himself, three shots. He if hundred percent on his shots as well as four saves. So playing both ends of the ball, leading the lobby in saves and goals. You do not see that every day. He's got the lucky score there too, triple sevens. He is just locked in right now. But yeah, Daniel, I mean, he, he made North Johnston just start off the game itself very, very hot. He brought them off to an early lead. You saw towards the end there, we saw FaZe Mexican with that, that same little chip shot, lob shot right in the crease. Just send it up over the defenders. It might be a slow shot, but nobody is ready for that angle. And it seems to just kind of get in those defenders' heads. And it works two times in a row, right? One shot, bang, goal. 20 seconds later, exact same shot, bang, goal. Brings it to that six-goal scoreline, that five-goal lead. And it's just all momentum from there. So North Johnston, very strong game one. South Lee, a few of these players definitely have it within them. We're going to have to see them kind of adapt moving into the rest of the series.
Yeah, you mentioned those loft shots from FaZe Mexican. It's kind of like when you're watching basketball and you see them just absolutely send like a floater up there in the air. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just like floating for so long before it actually reaches the net. And uh, it's exactly kind of what we saw, a bit of a Rocket League replica of that. But without further ado, let's head into game number two here. Now let's continue to see the action. And we got a clean slate here, right? So if you're South Lee, this is what exactly you were looking for. You don't have the four or five goals that North Johnson built up in that advantage. Back to a clean slate, play your offense in your defensive game, and you can find one here for yourselves as well. Yeah, as long as you don't allow yourself to get off to such a slow start, G might have his an idea to change that, though. He's trying to set something up in front of this net, but as long as South Lee doesn't start off too, too behind, I don't think they'll have as much of an issue in this game itself in terms of kind of keeping themselves with within the game, within reach of a victory in the game because that's the big thing that we've been seeing in a lot of these series when you're down a five or six goal lead i mean do you even have it in you to try and keep playing that game it's tough sometimes staring at that score line and thinking okay we have to find all these goals ourselves cholo finding the first one for south lee the only player that we didn't see actually find one in game one there for south lee he's gonna break the barrier find the first goal in the game start South Lee out on a completely different path here in game two. Yeah, South Lee looking good here. And that's exactly what they needed, an early goal to kind of set the tone here for this game number two. Now, instead of being behind those few goals and what we saw in the previous, they've actually built that lead for themselves here. Now, looking for a second, though, is exactly the name of the game here. And look at that! A second will be found. Chalo going to find it here. And gonna put this one now to a 2 0 scoreline. South Lee, they're starting to pick up momentum and they're starting to bring this one back a little bit further. We might got a series on our hand here. You see the Kachow after. I love these after goal explosions. They are they are awesome. But uh it's 2 0 for South Lee. Exactly the response that we were looking for. And we actually got a series on our hand here. You were talking about being the possibilities of breaking out that 3 0 streak that we saw. And you know, I, I wanna knock on wood, but it's looking good so far here for South Lee to try to find game number two. Yeah, already, every time it's early clears from South Lee, it's not allowing North Johnston to kind of just dance in front of the net and kind of get their setups going. You're not allowing FaZe Mexican to just chill in the crease and kind of get his little chip shots, little lob shots going. No one's sending him high on the South Lee defense this game. And right now, they're weaving through the defenders with little to no effort. Yay, Chris gets through three defenders. There is still Daniel around there to tap that ball. Sends it mid is yay, Chris. No more players, no more boost really from the side of South Lee to keep that offensive play going. But a few players take a reset and we're right back to it. South Lee, aggression, completely different in this game. And yeah, just already we, we do have a series on our hands. You said it yourself and completely oh. different than some of these series we've seen today. South Lee answering back very strongly north johnson yet to really get their hands on the ball yeah south lee's had a barrage of shots come through and that's been the big difference like you just mentioned the offensive time for both of these two teams has changed drastically coming from game number one to game number two we're halfway through this one right now south lee's been in possession for majority of it and they're gonna attack on a no third goal way. as well illusion gonna get on the board for his first of the series i believe or maybe the second but south lee for a three nothing goal advantage this is kind of similar to what we saw from north johnson in that most previous game but now in favor of south lee both teams having those momentum bursts from each other and south lee they're starting to bring this one in gear here now a three nothing scoreline is game changing it's gonna be very tough to claw back from for north johnson i mean two minutes and 20 seconds is a lot of time to work with but at the same time it's, it's not five minutes right i mean it's gonna be crunch time here for these next 120 seconds oh just barely with that save there i think it was illusion on that tap phase mexican almost had the pop into the net once again seems to be kind of his play when he when he hits that crease area he's looking to just send it high shoal once again he opened up the game he found one in the mid game and now as we move to two minutes left he completes the hat trick for himself a beautiful pass off the corner as well I believe it was yay chris who passed that one out there but that teammate right there for the shot 
Joel's able to lock in the hat trick for himself, set a completely different tone for this team moving on into the rest of the series. You would think that our overlay was messed up after watching game one because North Johnston, the team that took that game, what, six to two, seven to two, I think six to two was the final there has just been completely shut out for over three minutes now. And South Lee is looking to keep this moving. Daniel might want to change that, might want to break this shutout, but he's been having a very tough time finding anything like he did in game one. Yeah, this is a completely different game from what we saw. We've been saying that over and over again, but it's just crazy to think about. Like you don't see this every day where you see one team just completely dominate in game number one, and then the other team completely dominate in game number two. Both teams have found very dominant performances so far i mean this game is far from over here but with just a minute remaining and now a fifth goal being scored a fourth one from cholo is gonna really change the tides here now that's four shots four goals from cholo just turns it around on them i love Not, that like you know what i mean like they weren't even expecting that it. He, play. Was, he was like most people are just chasing that ball down the field and they're like i'm just gonna keep chasing it i'm not gonna go for the turn he's like whatever let's try to turn this for an offensive play and both the defenders were like what's going on like he Literally. found the opening and, and south lee now a fifth goal on the board and this game is probably pretty done after that makes like a fast and furious like tokyo drift maneuver for the u-turn and <laughs> neither of those defenders are ready they're still just moving out to mid expecting that ball to be following them but cholo just turns around turns what could have been a clear into a beautiful shot in a beautiful situation for south lee brings himself to his fourth goal in the game four goals four shots you know if cholo has taken a shot it's a calculated one, and it's most likely hitting the back of that net. Yeah, that was very nicely done for the side of South Lee. And Cholo, he's been game-changing coming in for this game number two. I mean, four of five goals coming from Cholo, kind of like what we saw from Sway in the earlier series. And now Cholo making a fifth. Five. He's running it up. That's five goals, five shots, by the way. He's 100% shooting as well. All these shots looking beautiful. Look, three defenders there, and he just finds the off angle and finds the opening. That's 6 nothing now with 12 seconds remaining. This game definitely done and dusted. 1-1, one, one, the scoreline. And this is the first time that we have guaranteed to see ourselves a game four. Cholo didn't even find a goal in game one. Like, we didn't really see much of the player in general in game one. We saw him occasionally there on the defense and making passes and clears out. But who knew that he had this in him? Who knew that they had that just in the back pocket, just waiting for game two, where this player can shine five goals, five shots, a demo there for good measure. No, no assists, no saves, okay? If, if Cholo is making plays, they are offensive plays, and it is going to be Chris or Illusion supporting them because, wow, those shots were just on point all game and really turned this series around for South Lee. I honestly, I thought we were kind of going to have a repeat of our first and second series with that game one scoreline, six to two for North Johnson. But South Lee completely flipped my expectations on their head moving into the rest of the series. I don't even know what to say anymore. Are, are we just, we have to go into game three now and it just be like, a zero zero game until overtime i don't think there's any other <laughs> like a, way this goes a four minute overtime on the horizon coming here we'll see but uh like you said about ye chris and illusion i mean yeah they might not have you know gotten the scoring board as much as cholo but if if you can just set them up whatever works like don't don't break it like don't fix it like don't try to fix it like it's good it's working keep the system going um very nicely done here from the side of south lee coming into the game number two now we'll get ready to go into game number three here in just a few seconds but it's going to be another competitive series. And I have no idea what I'm supposed to expect to see coming into game number three from what we saw in game number one compared to game number two. Are we going to get like a mix of both? Are we going to get uh, another dominant performance? Or like you mentioned, are we going to get a 0-0 overtime game? Nobody knows. Oh, yeah, North Johnson, new player coming in too. Yeah, Wani Wani. Going to be the third. Switching out G Clips you on that roster there. So let's see, maybe the sub, maybe maybe it's the change they needed in the series here. Just kind of switch up the pace of the gameplay. Sometimes you switch out, even in Rocket League, there's only three players on that field. If you switch out one of those players, just in the way the players interact on the field, the roles each players are kind of suited towards or prefer on that field, you never know, it might just be a little bit more synergy that you see on the field. Sometimes you gotta make those split second decisions, Those 
mid-game decisions, mid-series changes to kind of give yourself success in the series. South Lee, are they just toying with them in the crease right there? Because I feel like Ye, Chris, and Illusion could have touched that ball. I don't know if they were just waiting for a better angle or something, but I don't know. That was looking prime for a shot, and there was just no follow-up from South Lee. North Johnston, though, thanking the stars that there was no follow-up. Yeah, Josh, your prediction might be uh, looking right so far after the first minute, 20 seconds or so. We're still at zeros here between these two teams. Definitely slowing things down from what we saw there in game number one and two. But there's one that will trickle in. And who else but Cholo? As it's going to be now a one nothing lead for South Lee. Picked up here. Cholo comes flying through midfield. Opens things up. Drops it right down in the crease. Kachow at goal come through. South Lee up one nothing over North Johnson right now. And crazy to see i mean north johnson they were so dominant in game number one we got to see what we saw from them there coming through here again but cholo and ye chris just trying to open up for a play here now ye chris is flying for that one cholo gonna be on the defensive efforts illusion keeps the play intact now sent into the corner of north johnson trying to open this one up for a shot opportunity from the side of south lee but nothing to be found here quite yet just gonna be bouncing around through the midfield yeah i think it's that north johnston Burning a lot of boost, kind of straining themselves on the defense and never being able to kind of get any substantial play past this halfway point on the pitch. South Lee continually sending these players straight towards their own net. Daniel has the air carry, has the setup. The phase Mexican just a little bit too far behind. And it looks like Vani is going to be the player on the defense for most of this series. We've seen them really just chilling in this net trying to secure these saves. And I mean, three minutes into the game or close to two and a half minutes into the game, there's only been one goal to come through here. So very big differences from game one and two. Oh, these teams. People oh, deep break. Did you see that? Yeah, the saves, man. How do they do it? In the last That's second awesome. there. And yay, Chris, it just barely went over that crossbar too. Not able to find those same angles as phase mexican not able to give them some of their own medicine right there yeah very low score game low scoring game coming in here for game number three right now three minutes down one goal to be found here quite yet is now much different pace from what we saw earlier vanny trying to get involved here now as this new incoming player here for north johnston shot on target though gonna come through cholo finding his second of the game and Brings it up to a 2-0 scoreline now for South Lee. They have a bit of a cushion to work with. And North Johnston, you're looking at this one now, and you're starting to get a little bit worried because South Lee, they've started to take advantage of this game right now. 2-0, the scoreline we're looking at. you got to start finding something soon here if you are North Johnston and try to keep yourself in this one for now. Uh, obviously, a lot of time to work with, and just, you know, two goals definitely workable, but you can't get Cholo on the offense like this anymore. I mean, Cholo, he's been scoring over and over again. Got to keep them out of your net. And there's the goal from Illusion. That is going to help seal the deal a little further for South Lee. Still in reach for North Johnson, but now a lot more difficult because that goal from Illusion to extend this scoreline now to three. Very nicely done as well. Minute 42 to remain and a big scoreline to make up. And you saw Illusion. You could see it in the replay as well. Spots out the play from mid five seconds before it even happens. The second that ball starts flying high, He's already sending himself in the air. He's waiting for it to come right back down. And he knows that it's going to be a great angle because he knows those two defenders are so preoccupied with Chris and Cholo in the crease. And back to the crease, Cholo finds another one before I can even finish hyping up that last goal from Illusion. Yeah, the South League guys are get, getting in gear here right now and locking it in with a 4 to nothing advantage with just a minute 25 remaining on the clock as well. Uh, it's starting to be like North Johnson was keeping this game within reach for so, so long. And now it's just slowly falling out of their reach right now as South Lee will continue to extend the scoreline further. We bounce back over though across the midfield, bouncing around here now. It's going to be Cholo just backing this one up, sends it over towards the crease here for North Johnson, trying to find a goal opening for himself. But Illusion uh, taking it alone, not able to clear it through. But there's his teammate Cholo able to make it happen. Four shots, four goals, and Cholo replicating what we saw from him in game number two. All around show of strength from South Lee. Chris, Illusion, Cholo, all three players have found their respective goals in both this game, the last, a couple in the first game as well. 
South Lee. I, I just don't even know how we've gotten to this point, considering North Johnston and how strong of a game one they had. Cholo, he's not done. That's five goals in the game. When will he slow down? Yeah, it's actually mind-boggling right now, as we do see Cholo continue with the pressure. Another Kachow. I feel like I've seen that Kachow like 15 times so far in this I've series. I've heard it 15 times, too. <laughs> South Lee. 45 seconds to go on the clock, and this one might just be uh, out of reach for North Johnson here now in South Lee. I think they're going to take this game number two, and from dropping game number one the way they did with, uh, you know, a four-goal advantage in favor of North Johnson, I wasn't expecting to see South Lee respond so strongly as now coming through. I mean, at the beginning of this game, I thought, oh, you know, it's been two, and two minutes into this game, and it's only been one goal scored or so. Maybe we're really going to slow down the offensive pressure, but no. South Lee turns it up real quick. Now six to nothing. 20 seconds to go, and I think just slowing this one down here right now. North Johnson just trying to find one goal on the board here to at least get one. But as of right now, this is South Lee's game to win. South Lee, and barring any last second goals here, we could be seeing a immediate run back of the 6-0 scoreline. That was the scoreline of game two there, where South Lee was able to take the victory. And now, after a tough game one for themselves, South Lee is on series point after two beautiful games, specifically from Chol right there, he has been a star player from the side of South Lee, putting it all on his back there. Five shots, five goals. Once again, almost the exact same thing as we saw there in game two. Game three looking just as strong for South Lee. I don't know where this momentum in game two came from. I don't know where these mechanics came from, but I'm all here for it because they are just showing out right now and they're looking to bring it home strong here in game four. Yeah, Cholo, standout player, of course. We've been talking about him all game long there. Uh, Yi Chris didn't get as much involvement there going on in that game number three. I mean, he just had all of his teammates doing everything around him. He just had to be the glue for the team, essentially, for that Pretty one. Much. Um, but I'm interested to see if we do see a bit more of a bounce back here uh, from the side of North Johnson. I, that, that'd be really what I'd like to see. I want to see another one of these more competitive games where we see, you know, maybe an overtime, maybe a 2-2 or something, you know, 2-1 final score. Um, I'm interested to see. But without further ado, let's get headed in with game number four here. I mean, we potentially got a game five on the horizon as well, but one game at a time, game number four here. Like you said, South Lee on series point. Are they looking to seal it up here in game number four? Or will, will North Johnston force us to a game number five and essentially turn this to a B01? Oh, Chow. wow. Already wow. first goal from South Lee. Kachow once again can't run away from the lightning. Look at that. Off the kickoff. Who else to? Who else to find that goal, right? Cholo is the only man, right? He's the man, the myth, the legend. He's able to find it time and time again. Face Mexican going to contest the kickoff there, and it's going to go in favor of the side of North Johnson. Can they try to open things up? Cholo, no, on defense. Ready to lock things down. Is now looking for a quick little clear here. Yee Chris going to take possession of it. Flicks it over an opponent. Another flick coming through there from Illusion, just keeping it away from their defenders. Looks like a game of keep away coming through here for both of these two teams. Now Cholo in the corner, though, fighting for it. Going to send it back over to the crease here now. And we're going to be back to an even ball. But South Lee, I mean, and they pick up right where they left off. Very early goal. And I think that's really just going to put North Johnston into a little bit of a tough mental space coming in, being like, oh my gosh, we, we're coming into a clean slate, but just in the matter of 10 seconds, Cholo just comes through and finds one right away. Very tough. You just got to get over that hump, get over that hurdle, and uh, try to continue on with your success here in this series. North Johnson going to be hunting for the back of the net, but quickly turned around. Cholo going in Look for his very aerial play, and it's actually big defense coming through from Daniel, though. Knocks it away. Yeah, Daniel, he was a standout player of North Johnson in game one, both offensively and defensively. Of course, this, this whole squad of North Johnson has just had a tough time keeping up with South Lee, keeping up with Cholo. A lot of these air grabs, these air carries, all the way from the other side of the field too. That could be a wide open net, and it is. Faze Mexican spots out, target locked, and make sure that goal goes through. Look at this, illusion just too late to that ball right there. Yay, Chris, trying his hardest. Not gonna be there either. Ties it up, North Johnston. Not gonna let their series die just yet. No, not at all. North Johnston will keep this one intact and keep it going here. 
one to one the score line this is what i was asking for a little bit more in the pre-game show or for the pre-game show for the game four at least was just you know a little bit more of a competitive game here between these two teams rather than just seeing one team just really put the pedal to the metal and start to run it up cholo though looking to retake this lead for south lee north johnston their team here right now trying to get one back on the board keep themselves going keep themselves alive in the series a floater to come through and just barely over the opponent he chris able to find it and just look at this floater I mean, we saw a few of these so far tonight already and here's another one nice one chipped onto the green right there beautiful second goal from south lee and it wasn't even trollo to find that one too allowing a few more players on this roster to find some goals of course cholo has been coming off these past two games with five goals apiece not able to find the second touch for himself there tries to have the reset on the backboard the double touch play just out of his grasp as illusion immediately brings it back to shots on net and that's kind of just been the name of the game for south lee here we've been seeing it a ton just shoot 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 and deal with the consequences later we have seen some goals back from North Johnston, but it's almost been overwhelming in terms of success for South Lee with this game plan. Just aggression, aggression, aggression. Worry about the defense later, and oftentimes they they have enough boost in the tank to play on this defense. Oh. Daniel right there off the post. The angle not in his favor. Daniel, the heartbreak on that shot to try and tie up the game. And now you're just back out to trying to center this ball, trying to have that second player come in for the pass because a lot of times you need a two-man play to make these shots happen. Yeah, Josh Daniel really wishing he could have that one back there as it was just trickling on the goal line, but not going to get knocked away. And now getting it sent on the offensive pressure from North Johnson looked good for a few moments, but look at this, none the less than Chow Lau to translate this immediately back to an offensive play for themselves as he passes it right down to Illusion. Illusion right in the center, ready to go for it. Cholo picks up a lot of boost. He's able to take it in the sky, drops it down. Illusion was there and ready, and that is going to be another for South Lee. Stacks them up to a two goal advantage here now in game number four, and they're building that little uh, cushion for themselves here to help build this advantage here as well. North Johnson, you've got to find a goal here in the next 40, 50 seconds or so if you want to have a competitive chance coming back into this game or else you're down 3-1 with just 30 seconds remaining and it's going to be pretty tough to find two goals in under 30 seconds. Yeah, remember when I said you almost always need that second player there to really secure goals for yourself? South Lee knows that. And Cholo, as much as he does like to make solo plays and find flashy goals... He knows that passing it to the teammate as well is a very easy way to secure yourself a goal, especially when you have Illusion in a perfect spot in the crease like that, just waiting for the pass. That's something that South Lee has kind of excelled at throughout this entire series, is being right in the right position to grab passes from your teammates. There's no second guessing where that ball is going to be. Just great awareness all over the field. And with the time running away, North Johnston, you only have 35 seconds here for two goals for yourselves. It's not the easiest play, but Cholo wow. going to make it three goal mountain to climb. Continually finding shots for himself. You know, Self it, assist sets it up. I don't know, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I mean, you know, 3-1, 31 seconds, 40 seconds remaining, definitely within grasp, definitely within reach. It's going to be tough, but you find a goal, you know, each 15 seconds of that last 30 seconds, you're able to make something happen. But now with four, and we're down to 20 seconds remaining, a three-goal differential here between these two teams. And South Lee looking for another with Cholo there on the net, shot on target, but nothing going to come through. The defense is there for North Johnson, but we're down to 10 seconds now. And that's going to wrap it up. South Lee, they're able to take this game number four, and they're able to actually bring back the series. They dropped game number one to North Johnson, but we're able to come back, find three in a row, and no a way. lot of these games were dominant fashion too. Cholo's not leaving this field without one more, and that's going to be Cholo stacking on another five to one scoreline. A second remains on the clock. We'll get a kickoff, and that's pretty much it. We'll see how long they can keep it up for after that. Yeah, I mean, with only one second, there's only one goal even possible here. South Lee 
has completely... I know it wasn't a reverse sweep, but with how strong game one was from North Johnston, it almost felt like that because of that scoreline. 6-2 for North Johnston in game one. And South Lee just comes back swinging, returns the favor in full two 6-0 games in response and finishes it off with a 5-1 scoreline. That's going to be 3-1 in the series. South Lee and specifically Trollo, man, I've kind of been pointing out some of these players, some of these teams that we want to keep looking at throughout this season. And South Lee and Trollo are definitely another one of them. We saw South Lee, we saw Pine Forest and Legs, and I'm blanking on our, our players from Lumber or uh, from Lumberton there, but that Lumberton squad as well, another very, very strong one from tonight. And our first 3-1 series, our first series with, you know, a little bit more competition to it, a little bit more back and forth in the series. Yeah, I was excited to see it. You know, we got to a game four. We got some more competition. We still saw dominant games come through for each of those two teams, but it was a little bit more of a back and forth there, which was much appreciated. We also saw Cholo and Illusion. They were the chemistry between those two players was phenomenal. That really helped them carry this one over the edge and find that win for South Lee. But I will say on the other side of things as well, Daniel and FaZe Mexican, two players that kind of stood out to me on the side of North Johnson who are looking really good for today's matches as well. Uh, helping out was Vanny, but the the phase mexican and daniel definitely two players that stood out to me so definitely like you said very interested to see how these teams will continue to go as the season goes on four weeks i believe is what it is of regular season play of qualifiers uh but that being said we have one more game here for this evening before we wrap things up it is going to be between ee e. smith and lee um so we'll get that one started here after this short break
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some VESL. Week one of our Rocket League qualifiers right here. Fundy and Deprive back on the mic. We've got our final series for everybody here. We did see three of our four series already. Last one, we did see our first 3-1, actually. But we do have a returning squad here in E.E. E. Smith. I believe should be the same squad unless they have multiple rosters over at that school. But we are going to have to see. They're going to be up against Lee County. So we just saw South Lee, but Lee County, another school here. But nonetheless, I think uh, we're pretty ready to get into this one. E.E. E. Smith, we already saw a bit of what they have to offer earlier. They did have a tough series up against Forest Pines there. But they were able to have much closer game two, game three, moving into that series. I think we are getting a few players just joining into the game here. We're going to have to see if we'll... Uh, restart this oh. one back or if everyone's just ready to play i think we're just ready to get into it it looks like and it looks like we are going to see the same roster from e.e smith as well carlos divian and z we've seen them before over from lee county clocks deadly twins and king bob bob twins and clocks that's how i'm going to be referring to them most likely throughout this series and i think we are ready to go it looks like we're just playing yeah, we're definitely playing here between these two teams right now. E.E. E. Smith, they did have a tough time in that first series, like you mentioned, but they're starting it off with a bang here, coming through in a game number, or series number four up tonight, I should say. Game number one of this series, starting off with a bang. one nothing advantage, just 54 seconds into play here now. And they're looking to carry this one forwards here as uh, it is going to be Lee County looking to have to answer back here now as it is going to be shot coming through here. Bounced across and just battle in the midfield for these two teams here right now. Deadly Twins trying to find a bit of an offensive play, but quickly stopped here from the side of E.E. E. Smith. And I will say, from that 3-0 that we saw in the first series with E.E. E. Smith, like, it was a 3-0, but I feel like he had some close games mixed in there as well. And they were playing a fairly strong team. So we could see things end up a little bit differently here in this matchup for them. Only time can tell, but... Looking good so far for the first minute and a half. Lee County struggling to get something going on the offensive side of things. But if you're E.E. E. Smith, you are more than okay with that. Look at that big bump coming through as well. Yeah, a lot of play in the midfield here. But E.E. E. Smith sitting on a one goal lead. It's always nice to have, right? It's, it's not something that's going to take the game through for you. In fact, we saw E.E. E. Smith kind of get a little bit uh, blindsided by their own one goal lead earlier. And King Bob... Finds a wide open floater there, right down middle. Just lets it bounce. E.E. E. Smith, a little bit too aggressive there on that one. And Lee County easily ties up this game. And that's what happens when you commit too much to the offensive play there, Josh. It is Lee County who are able to bite back. And a lot of time to work with for these two teams. But this next goal is going to be really nice to find for whatever squad finds it. Just to be able to, you know, provide yourself a little bit of an advantage here in this series. Uh, but three minutes go, going left here on the clock, nearing the halfway marker in this game. A lot more of a competitive matchup than what we saw in some of our previous here this evening between these two teams. Bouncing around here now, going to be landing in front of the Lee County net, looking for an offensive play. Is going to be the side from E. E. Smith. Divine trying to make something happen, but it is going to be Carlos picking it up. Keeps the ball in play, centered in front of the Lee County net. Nothing to be found from it quite yet. And now just bouncing around the midfield. As this one is sent towards the E.E. Smith zone this time around, but quickly blocked away. A long shot from Carlos off target, but the floater misses, and it hits the post. You wish you had that one back if you were E.E. Smith. So many close opportunities there, just not able to seal the deal and put it in the back of the net. Just rides the goal line there, and it's not enough to cross. Divian tries to make up for some of that lost time there from that earlier shot, but he still can't close it out. And Lee County has three players kind of just running up midfield here with the ball. One player stays back for defense. It's going to be Twins, and he's right there for the contestion. I like that far out contestion to send it with a wide clear, put a little bit of power behind it too. Not afraid to use boost for some of these shots. Z goes a little bit too high on that one. He's ran out of resources. Got to be the player to rotate back. Carlos, the only one in no here way. from the side of E.E. E. Smith, oh. and it goes in. Carlos! I think that's got to be the slowest. There is no way that was 39 miles no per hour. Way. That was the no slowest way. ball I've ever seen. If that's maybe, 39 maybe. miles per hour, 
I should not have no speeding tickets. You know what I'm saying? Or wait, hold on. That I, I don't know. My, my brain's breaking. If but, that was 39 miles an hour, you would have all the speeding tickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of speeding tickets. Um, but that being said, it's gonna be E.E. E. Smith now. 2-1 in the advantage in the driver's seat of this game as we near down to the end of it as well. 80 seconds is all that remains left on the clock here for this one. So that goal was actually massive to find. It's up to Lee County. If they want to win this one, they not only have to find a goal in the next minute and 10 seconds or so, but they would also have to win an overtime play. So E.E. E. Smith have really set themselves up nicely so far here in this one. But it is Lee County on the offensive aggression coming through here right now. They're keeping it in play of E.E. E. Smith's zone, but just like that, quick clear to come through. Nice little passing plays coming in through as well. Not able to find the goal off of it here quite yet, but down to 50, 50 seconds. And it's now bouncing in front of the net of Lee County and a shot to come through. Big bump, actually. And that's going to open up the net for a shot, but it's actually going to go a little bit wide from ZZ and it's going to hit the post. E. e. Smith, an early lead in this game. Still only a one goal lead, though, as we get towards this later. Last 30 seconds of the game. Daniel, or it's Divian, actually, who pops it right off his tail there. An interesting touch from Divian at the end, but it works out very, very well. And that's going to be 3 1. That, a two goal lead with 29 seconds left to play, that might be the nail in the coffin here in game one. Lee County. They had the one wide open net goal from King Bob, but when there is a defender in the net, they have not really had anything close to a goal there. I think E.E. E. Smith might just be able to squeak out the victory here in this last like 30 seconds too. Yeah, so much time was left and now with E.E. E. Smith just finding these last couple of goals, they were able to just to close the gap and there was not a lot of time left when Lee County was like, oh man, we're down by two goals and we're in crunch time, and that's going to be the game. E.E. E. Smith, they might have not won the first series of this evening, but they're off to a strong start for the second series. Up 3-1 to one here, finding that game number one victory and finding a, a first game win here. And that's always nice, especially in the series. Just to have that one nothing advantage really helps you out. It goes a long way. But just take a look at the shot counters from E.E. E. Smith. What is that? 12 total shots throughout the team compared up against the three from Lee County. I think that shows you kind of the pace that E.E. E. Smith was playing at during this game. But nonetheless, three to one, it's feeling like a much more reasonable scoreline than a lot of these series that we've seen today, Jackson. And Lee County, they definitely have, they, they had a lot of moments where they, they did shine there. King Bob, of course, kind of just recognizing that open net, recognizing the triple commit, capitalizing on that for their one goal that they did find. I think just increasing the shot counter moving in to the rest of the series is going to be key here for Lee County. I think if you can move into game two with the focus of finding more shots for yourself, I think everything else might just iron itself out along the way. I think that's got to be your main focus is just forcing E.E. E. Smith into defensive positions, continuing to find shots for yourself because you can't find goals if you aren't even taking the shots in the first place. Yeah, to sum it up, you can't score if you don't shoot, right? I mean, we've heard many great hockey players, basketball players, football players, whatever it is, say that, right? And you got to shoot to score. And uh, we'll see what happens coming into game number two here, which we'll have in just a few moments for y'all, um, but about 10 seconds or so. But uh, it is going to be uh, a very nice one here. I mean, honestly, we'll see if E.E. E. Smith can continue on with the pressure here now. Um, one nothing advantage, like I said, is big in a series. But if they find the second, put themselves on the series point here right now, move up to nothing in this series. It would get a lot more interesting. Got some connecting players here. A little bit interesting here right now. I think we're, oh, we're going to wait to touch the ball. Okay. Oh, and here we go. No way. <laughs> what a kickoff. Okay. They're, they're, I think they were going to let it go for a second just because there's not everybody connected quite yet. But here we are 15 seconds in. We got a clean slate on us here now and we're in play now. Yeah, at the very least, there's, you know, a bit of a, a gentleman's agreement between these teams. No one's going to get a little bit too antsy before everyone's connected and in the server. So now, 30 seconds in after the timer, we've seen a little bit of play come through. But yeah, as we were talking about in that pre-show in between our games here, we really, really just need to see Lee County getting a little bit more aggressive and, and setting themselves up for shots because... They were just allowing themselves to sit kind of turtled up near their net, and that's never going to convert into any goals for yourself. Not If you're just waiting for triple commits, 
and and for King Bob to be able to send them send them long and lob them after that, it's not a sustainable way to play Rocket League. It's not going to take you through the series. Vivian sets it up off the backboard. Carlos not going to be able to jump and and find that follow up there. So Lee County living for a second more, but there was only one defender in net there, and and he was not in place. E. e. Smith already finding openings and i think they're starting to recognize it as you can see the aggression continuing yeah we're still scoreless here after the first minute and a half though so definitely a little bit of a different you kind know, of role for the series that we're seeing here right now from what we saw in the last few right the last few series we saw several goals being scored from both sides this one definitely a slower tempo a more defensive heavy game between these two teams right now but here's an opportunity for offense Lee County just missing out on that one it's now going to be E. Smith translating this to an offensive play of their own this is going to be Deadly Twins picking up the boost though but just knocking it right out front of their net that was a close call for Lee County but luckily they get away scot free and now 0-0 still as we're under three minutes remaining very scrappy game scoreless game coming through here right now fighting for boost it is going to be Deadly Twins looking for an offensive play of their own but going to be demoed here right now is Z and Chloe trying to find something over the midfield. We do have Divine shooting this one away, getting a rebound set up for E. e. Smith. Just not able to knock it home quite yet in Lee County. Their defensive efforts were strong and they're able to stop this one for now. But it's going to be E. e. Smith quickly sending it back into the zone of Lee County. Halfway through, we're at a scoreless game here. Jackson very, very back and forth. We like to use the word scrappy a lot. And I think that applies perfectly to this game right now. E.E. E. Smith, they had a pretty easy one earlier on, and man, did I just cast or curse him? No, even with the wide open net, Devian not there to change the angle. Carlos has to come in for the tap in, for the confirmation of that shot, because I think Devian thought that he had the shot and was just willing to let it roll, and it slowly rolled a little bit wide right. That could have been out of their hands, but Carlos right there to confirm themselves the 1-0 lead. Bring themselves later on into this game. Break the barrier and sometimes that's all you need to open the floodgates to more shots, to more goals. Z immediately follows that one up. Not even 10 to 15 seconds later with a goal of their own. Very nicely done from Z to extend this scoreline for E.E. E. Smith. I always been talking about all night, just building a cushion for yourself when it comes to goals. And that's exactly what E.E. E. Smith just did. Having that two goal advantage will look a lot nicer than the one goal advantage. And with just a minute and 45 seconds remaining on the clock, it is really crunch time for both of these two teams right now. And E.E. E. Smith, they're like, hey, we're sitting pretty with two goals. We're Lee County. They know the pressure's on. and They're going to be forced to triple commit onto some plays they might typically not. So we'll see how that does play out here right now as we do see the Lee County players optimally going for this one here right now. But Z can knock it away real quick, sends it into an offensive play of their own, and that's a wide open net. Oh, because there was a Rock League rule going on in the corner. I didn't even see that. They were deadlocked. Look at the top oh, right. Com oh, you can't, you can't see. You can't oh, see. Yeah, you, you can't see, off. but yeah. They, they're, oh, they, they just oh. got demoed right there. But it, it was That's a rock league rule. They were, they were rule one is what it's called. And they were deadlocked with each other, uh, front of the cars, both of them. And uh, that's why I was like, where is all the players? Like, why is this net wide open right now? And truly, if they broke the rule one rule, they would be okay. And they honestly might have not have had can't. that goal go in. But you can't. It's rule one. Like, it, rule number one of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. Rock League rule number one, you know, you got to follow suit. Yeah, you don't break that deadlock. Not unless there's another player who comes in to break it up or if the ball hits you or if maybe you just end up sliding off of each other. But oftentimes you are locked right in there. Both players at full acceleration having to wait for some outside intervention. It's basically <laughs> immovable object meets unstoppable force right there. And you get a nice even reaction. Nobody moves and that essentially just turns the game into a 2v2. And down to twos, E.E. E. Smith, they're going to shine. And half a game of no goals at all. And E.E. E. Smith just rapid fire. Bang, bang, bang. They find three. We're 30 seconds left in this game right now. And Lee County is grasping at straws. Yeah, with just 20 seconds remaining here in game number two, the, the score line is just a little too strong right now in favor of E.E. E. Smith. And that's going to force them I, I talked about how big their game number one win for them was to you know just help out push them forward in this series but the game number two win 
Definitely going to help out even further now, putting themselves on a series points all up to Lee County. They'll have to win three in a row if they want to take this series. I'm interested to see if we will see a map four or a five come through here, or if we will see E.E. E. Smith just come through and find a 3-0 victory. We saw E.E. E. Smith get 3-0 earlier today, but now this time they're doing the dominant performing as now a 3-0 scoreline coming through in game number two. It's going to be Z coming through with big plays, two goals, five shots, two saves, two demos, one assist. There was not one stat line where he didn't have a play in it. So very nicely done from Z, and that's going to really help out E.E. E. Smith and bringing this up to a 3-0 scoreline. Another unfortunate repeat of no shots really on the scoreboard for Lee County as well. Just really tough for these guys to get off of that back foot there. E.E. E. Smith, of course, Z, you can see peppering on shots there. Five shots on the scoreboard. It's something that I really pointed out there in game one when we saw a bit of a higher scoring game. I guess it was still 3-1. So just one more there from Lee County. But yeah. Running it back, E.E. E. Smith, 3-0. But they really locked in towards the end of that game. It was so back and forth and almost dead even for close to three minutes there. And E.E. E. Smith, they found their openings and they find one after another. Those rapid fire goals can stack up so, so fast. And then they just play defense for the last minute. They sit back. They stay by their net. They make those long clears and just wait for that timer because it's, the, it's in their favor. They're just waiting it out. Yeah, and just like that, that's a 2-0 lead here found for E.E. E. Smith. We're going to get into game number three here in just a few seconds, and we'll see if E.E. E. Smith can either continue the pressure and find a 3-0 victory here, or if it is going to be Lee County able to bite back and find one for their own. But uh, we'll see here. Game three, it's going to tell a lot of tales. Only time can tell who's going to come away with this series, but E.E. E. Smith, they are definitely the clear favorites here for this one so far, but we've seen a lot more competitive games here in this series than what we saw in our previous three, so this could really go any which way. I know that for a fact, but uh, we'll see how this one does go. A little bit of a trickling ball. It's actually going to sneak right into the net of Lee County early on, and E.E. E. Smith will pick up right where they left off with Carlos finding a big opener just dribbling through. E.E. E. Smith off to the races once again. This time, much earlier in the game as well to get their lead started. Sec second series that we've seen them here on the stream, and it's been very, very different from Series 1 here. E.E. E. Smith, of course, in and on Series Point themselves. We saw them in reverse sweep situation earlier, and they were able to tighten up the scoreline of a lot of those games. And now here up against, I think, a bit more evenly matched of a team here. E.E. E. Smith slowly taking the victory in all of these games here has been slowly just stacking up the lead. And the one two goal deficit has just been a little bit too much for Lee County to kind of overcome, especially as we've been talking about in between these games, just with the lack of shots coming through. The lack of ability to really set anything oh. up sub substantial in front of the net there. Divian tries to follow up, but King Bob with the clear out now sends it high from King Bob. This could be the shots that Lee County is looking for. You've got three players over near this ball. Z's the only defender really there, but Twin and Clocks can't really decide who wants to touch the ball there, and we're back out to center field. Yeah, back to center field where we belong. It's going to be the one nothing scoreline. I mean, you talked about it. I mean, Lee County, they've just been... They've been playing pretty good defense. They're keeping E.E. E. Smith down to a low scoring scoreline at the end of the day. It's just translating those defensive efforts into offensive plays as well. It seems like they're having a tough time playing both offense and defense at the same time because whenever Lee County tries to go in for an offensive play, E.E. E. Smith is just like, oh, your net's wide open. Let me go for an opportunity here. Let me just try to get it a quick clear and, you know, follow it through and open up your net and... Just like that, we find a goal for ourselves. So Lee County, they just got to find the balance here between the offensive and the defensive efforts. You know, it's no problem to let two goals, three goals come through for E.E. E. Smith if you're finding four or five. So it's a big difference maker. We'll see how that one does continue. But we're halfway through game number three already. E.E. E. Smith is leading. It is crunch time. Everything is on the line for Lee County for this game. Otherwise, they will be dropping it here now. It's actually going to be a tied up scoreline. King Bob. Finding one there for Lee County. One to one now as we near this halfway marker. Just as I mentioned, we needed to see something from Lee County and this could be it. I mean, even just a setup like that, right? One player pulls it out of the corner. The other player is there to kind of change that angle and tap it in. We never saw anything like that from Lee County in a few of these earlier games here. So I think 
it's kind of in their heads now that, that something has to change, especially on the offense there. I don't think, even with the score lines, you know, being how they were, I don't think their defense was the issue. And we can talk about it all we want. It's kind of like just playing a broken record at this point because we kind of know exactly what we're going to say. Lee County really just needs to lock in on this offense. They've been able to tie up the score line now. About as close of a game as we've had here at this two-minute mark. And you're in reverse sweep territory, right? You need every game under your belt here. Divian sets it up towards the middle. Carlos, another one high in the third man. They're waiting on him. It's Z to knock that one through. 2-1 E.E. E. Smith. As Lee County really starts to lock in on the offensive side. E.E. E. Smith going to return the favor right back to him. And bring themselves back to a one goal lead here in game three. In the best of five. E.E. E. Smith. You're a minute 50 away from a 3-0 victory in the series. Yeah, this is E.E. E. Smith right now. Looking good. I mean, they found that responding goal, but look at that. It's going to be King Bob once again coming through for Lee County, tying this one up, putting it to a 2-2 two -to -two scoreline here now and bringing this game the distance. That's exactly what I was looking to see from Lee County, get the offensive pressure going a little bit further, and that's exactly what they've been able to do here now, tying this one up with a minute 40 on the clock to go. This is anybody's game to take. E.E. Smith, they're looking for a sweep, but Lee County, they're looking for a reverse sweep here. So we'll see what happens. But this next goal is going to be substantial to see who's going to win this game. And Z knocks it in close to the Lee County net. Just going to go up the post now, bouncing up around the sky. Drops it down. We'll see what can happen here in this one. Z going to send a floater here right now. Floating in front of the net of Lee County. Not able to be found. Knocked down here now. It is going to be divine. And it is going to be sent over in front of the net. Bouncing around here. Nothing to be found quite yet. We're down to a minute, Josh. It is crunch time for both of these two teams. And Lee County, if they want to keep themselves alive here in this series, they have to find this next goal. Now, this is Rocket League right here. Down to less than a minute left. It's a tie game. Lee County, do or die right now. King Bob has been the one to find the goals for them here. Deadly Twins and Clocks to be the assist makers in a lot of these situations. And Lee County, you only need one more and 30 seconds off the clock to be able to finish this one through. But look oh at the my. wide net, it's Z. Z, his second goal in the game could be the decider. Brings them back into the lead, E.E. E. Smith. Every time you think they're done, right back into the game, right back into the lead and putting Lee County in a tough situation with only 28 seconds left. Lee County here now. Are they able to no do way. it? No way. Divine is just going to find one last second. It looks so possible. I mean, there was little time, but Lee County, they were still in reach of this one, but just a weird touch from Divine is going to result in the goal there. And E.E. Smith take it up 4-2. to two. That might have just been the goal that set them apart from Lee County and might have found them the sweep here in this game number three to sweep this series. And move on to I believe will be a one and one record after week number one very nicely done from E.E. E. Smith they bounce back from that first series the day King Bob though keeps it alive very hat -trick. good shot coming through and yeah hat trick from King Bob King Bob as well making big plays here very quick shot there that was actually I didn't even see how many miles per hour it was but it was quick and I'll tell you that 13 seconds to go Lee County they still have to find one more though and that's the challenge E.E. E. Smith, you literally just have to send this ball high and just stall out the time for yourselves here to secure the series for yourselves. Oh. If anything, you might be able to find another one. It's Carlos with a bit of a self-save, but it sends it to the ground regardless. E.E. E. Smith in the last second there, really locking it down for themselves. Lee County and King Bob specifically. I got to give you a hand in that last second, not even last second, last few minutes of momentum that really came through for the Lee County squad. And I think even with another 3-0 on the day here, this time E.E. E. Smith going to be the one on the winning end of that one. But I think one thing I can say throughout this entire day, Jackson, throughout all four series that we've had here is 
we saw substantial changes in these teams from game one to game three or game four, whichever that last game in the series was. I think no matter what team you look at, you saw players start to feel a little bit more comfortable with each other. And keep in mind, this is week one, right? Some of these teams may have just been created. Some of them might have been playing together for months in some other leagues and some other brackets and things like that. So being able to see just improvements throughout the series, adjustments based on the matchup, based on the opponent, it's been great to see. And I think already seeing that from teams in week one, it, it just shows a positive outlook for the rest of the season for sure. Yeah, that's one reason why I love high school esports so much here right now. And VESL is doing a great job of, you know, providing a league for these players to play in because we see the growth from these teams. We see the communication improve. We see the momentum improve, improve rather. Um, but overall, it's just come down to some great games being played here. We had four games on the slate today. We, we did have a lot of, you know, 3-0, 3-1 games, but there were still great games to watch, especially that last series between E.E. E. Smith and Lee. I mean, that was a banger series between those two schools, just absolutely battling it out. Um, but we got a lot more action on the VES channel, VESL channel coming your way in just a few more weeks as well. I believe we got, uh, it's always Valorant and then Smash and then Rocket League every single week for the next four weeks of regular season play. And then we do got some more playoff and national state, or sorry, state play after that. So very excited to continue on with all this action moving forwards. But as for this evening and as for tonight, that it was going to be all from us. So thank you all so much back at home for joining us on the desk, joining us for these amazing matches to be played today. But we will catch you all on the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah.